Hey guys, it's Tanner with Built Not Bot, and we're jumping right into a really fun new challenge for me. I'm building my son a nightstand for his bedroom, and this is also going to be my submission for Rockler's challenge this year, in which they encourage you to try something you've never done before, and this project holds a bunch of brand new challenges for me. So what new skills am I going to attempt during this build? There's going to be three of them. The first one is kerf bending lumber. The second is going to be making legs out of cylinders. And the third and final one is going to be making my own drawer pull for this cabinet. To get things rolling, we're gonna start with the legs. And these legs are gonna be cylinders. I'm using my homemade jig for my table saw. It's a little bit sketchy, but it actually does a really nice job in making cylinders. Just a little bit of cleanup work when you're all done because the cut is really rough on these. You can actually keep spinning the cylinder and then just rub sandpaper back and forth and that speeds up the sanding process. Now unbeknownst to me, making the cylinders themselves were going to be the easiest part of this entire project and it was all pretty much downhill from there. So having a cylinder means I have no square sides to reference off of to cut all of my joinery. How could I have avoided this? I'm not really sure. Maybe I could have cut the 45s and then somehow tried to drill a hole and attach them to my jig to spin the cylinder afterwards, but that seemed a little bit difficult too. So I just used this square block here and lined up the initial lines I had made when I first pre-drilled the hole to go onto my lathe, and this worked fairly well. The next challenge with this joinery is I'm going to have an end grain to end grain glue up, which is naturally pretty weak. So I wanted to try and get a domino into each one of these joints and to do that I laid these out on the flattest reference I have in my shop which is my saw stop table saw and then I took a little gauge and marked a line in which I would reference off of with my domino. These dominoes are really serving two purposes here. The first is they help align these legs which like to roll all over the place. The second is they give me a much better surface area to uh, actually glue these up and give me a much stronger joint than that end grain to end grain would be all by itself. A lot of people like to hate on the Festool Domino and to be honest I love it. It might very well be my favorite tool in the entire shop. I worked extremely hard and saved up money to get it and I use it on virtually every single project. And your pro tip of the day, always keep your off cuts and use them as clamping blocks. Now let's address these legs. So the biggest issue right out of the gates is for whatever reason, this angle at the bottom is not sitting nice and flush. So what I'm going to do is take a reference that I know is nice and flat and square, my table saw top. And this square happened to be about this thickness here. And all I'm gonna do is take, inscribe all around the bottom of these legs. And that's gonna be my new cut line. And theoretically, that should allow me to get a nice flat sitting leg. So just pulled these off of the miter saw. See how they look. Okay, much, much better. I can fine tune the rest of that with some sandpaper, which I'll stick to here and rub them back and forth but I can live with that. We're down to like a 16th over here. So we're gonna jump from the legs to the actual cabinet portion of the build. This is the Shaper Origin. I picked this up used on Facebook Marketplace and I'm still getting the hang of it, but I'm using this to create a jig for my kerf bent cabinet. Essentially, this is a handheld CNC. I just have to walk it around and it does the cutting for me and it eliminates most of my human error. So I'm pretty happy with these legs. And I cut out a template on MDF on what I want the actual cabinet to look like. And a lot of new things for me, cylinder legs first, uh, curved corners is also gonna be a first for this top. Um, I did a test run on some curve bending, like I said, brand new to me. And I almost got my entire piece that I needed cut. And then right here is where things went south. I had literally two cuts left out of probably close to a hundred and I had a little kickback with my track saw and it just broke right through. But the idea with curve bending is creating a bunch of cuts. I'll move these out of the way. And then taking your lumber 
and bending it around your form. Now this to me is so stinking cool. And I hope I can pull this off because I think it will be awesome. When I did my test piece, I used my track saw, but I didn't like how that was starting to kick back over the course of all of these cuts. And I figured my table saw with this sled would work a little bit better. And it did to a certain point, then it started to droop over the edge because of the flexibility in, in between those curves. So I had to put in a couple supports. And then at the way end, I ended up flipping it side for side and finishing off the last bit here at the end. Then I carefully transport it over to a flat workstation and make the attempt at actually bending this into my forms. This makes me super nervous, you guys. Holy smokes. And here goes nothing. The first attempt at trying to bend this around that form that I created earlier, what I found out is this panel was much more rigid than the test piece that I created. It is about three times as wide, but I also believe that my depth of cut was slightly more shallow than the test piece was. But I was having a really tough time making that bend. And here's that test piece, has a ton of flex to it. And if you look at the sidewall here, there's maybe a 16th left of lumber. And here there might be closer to an eighth. So that's probably the reason why. All right, so I got it to this point. I, I don't know, this is so risky right now. And I'm almost certain that I'm going to push it too far. But it's just my style to freaking wing it. So I splashed a little bit of water on these joints and I'm putting a lot of weight into this, trying to bend it around that top curve and I'm just not having any luck. This side was a little bit more flexible, but I'm gonna add more water and let it sit. Fingers crossed. Right now, I think I'm just gonna let it sit like this overnight so the wood can get used to being in this shape in hopes that tomorrow when I work on it again, that it kind of wants to go into this shape instead of me having to force it so bad. And the water did help in letting it sit clamped up in the forms. It did somewhat hold that shape. So I went ahead and added all the glue and clamped it together and let it sit overnight. The next afternoon, I was excited to get back out to the shop and get all these clamps off and see what kind of masterpiece I had created when, boom. The first of many failures in this project. After several F-bombs, I sat and looked at this and wondered what I did wrong. I mentioned before, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this, and this was a huge rookie mistake. What I believe happened is these joints, when I curved them around, the wood was not actually pressed tight against each other. There were still large gaps in those curve cuts, and wood glue needs to be clamped tightly to itself in order for it to adhere properly. After scratching my head for a few minutes, I figured if I could somehow hold that seam from opening and spreading apart after I released the clamps, that it might actually still work out. So I CA glued these coals across the top of that seam in hopes that that would lock that into place and it would hold its shape. So I gingerly removed these clamps, being really gentle with the form. I had high hopes, but strike two. There is a lot of tension here. I wonder if I just permanently glue those on, if that would work better or not. It was kind of holding, sort of. Unfortunately for me, I'm too boneheaded to realize this just wasn't going to work. So instead of using CA glue, I used real wood glue to clamp those coals across the top and they actually did hold it in place. Unfortunately, after taking a step back, it wasn't even close to square. So I karate chopped those clamping calls off and I come up with the next plan. At this point, I've started to question every life decision I've ever made, but I'm going to add dominoes to the top. I'm going to epoxy all these curves instead of wood glue. I cut the corners out of my mold so that I could use them almost as a 90 degree angle clamp so that I'll be able to hold those sides at 90s. And I think with the epoxy flooded into those curves, there's no way this is not going to work, right guys? Right? might have epoxied it to the table. 
<laughs> Shoot. I'm pretty sure I did. Oh, there we go. That wasn't too bad. A little bit. I think it worked. Cool. If you step back really far and look past all the stains of glue and epoxy and look past all those ugly kerf cuts, it doesn't look that bad, right? I was tired of working on this Frankenstein looking cabinet and it's time to switch gears to the legs of this project which are going to be cylindrical so I went over to my lathe and roughed these out. On to the next struggle of this build and I'd love some feedback from you guys watching. I had a really difficult time getting everything square, plumb, and true when working with these cylinders. I used two squares here to find a center point and reference those to drill my hole for these little rising blocks that I'm going to use to make this cabinet look like it's somewhat floating. But this is nowhere near as precise as I would like it to be, and I'd love some feedback on the situation. If you know of a way that I could do all this better, please drop a comment below. I'm looking for suggestions on this. Okay, back to Frankenstein. I'm using my jointer here to get one side nice and flush, and then I take it to my table saw and cut the other side so everything is nice and even. And then I start the edge banding process. I'm just using these little pieces of veneers that I cut on my bandsaw and gluing them in place just as you see it here so that all of my grain is going in the same direction and it looks almost like one solid piece was placed around the perimeter. I added some blue tape to the inside circumference of this nightstand so that my flush trim bit wouldn't transfer all those little kerf ridges to the outside and that seemed to help smooth things out a little bit. I'm going with an inset drawer for this cabinet so I put the face of this drawer up against the cabinet itself and then traced it from the inside and I'm going to cut out on the outer edge of this line and then work my way up to that line with a sander. So using the shaper I designed a drawer pull and uh, an integrated system on the front of the drawer face that I think are going to be really cool. Um, so essentially I have a hexagon here and then I just finished up on a piece of scrap walnut the actual pull itself and my hope is that I can take this and inset it into this drawer face so that when you reach in you have something to grab onto. And I don't know how well this will show up on camera, but there's just a couple thousands left on here. And you can literally just take your fingernail and pretty much break right through it. So I'm gonna pop this guy out of here and sand it up a little bit. After a little bit of cleanup work on the sander, here's the first fit, butter. That's pretty darn good. I've got it glued. The tape is just my clamp. I'm gonna try and get into these creases as best I can to clean up the squeeze out. After that glue dried, it is time to put the face on this drawer front and I use the double-sided tape method and the playing card trick to get an even reveal all the way around. The tape is fairly strong, but you still gotta be a little bit careful when you're removing the drawer so that you don't shift that face in any way. And once you get a couple of screws in it, you don't gotta worry about it anymore. You gotta love that soft close finish. And this is my first real look at it all together. And the finishing touches, some Rubio Mono Coat. This is a hard wax finish. You just wipe it on and buff it off and let the wood kind of do all of the talking here. And that wraps up this project. It was an uphill battle from the start, but I'm really pleased with it. If you could do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. I don't get a ton of views on YouTube and I love to change that. So any feedback would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.